Thank you and good evening for joining us. Let's get you caught up on tonight's biggest stories. Yeah, this is the evening news on ABC 13. This is what was supposed to be a public meeting in Hempstead. It would have been the first one since Mayor Michael Shane Wolf was arrested for abuse of official capacity last week. Around 6.30 tonight, council rescheduled that meeting to next Monday, citing safety concerns because so many people showed up. Now, the public, as you can imagine, did not want that meeting delayed. The mayor, by the way, is accused of intervening to prevent his utilities from being cut off, despite owing more than $10,000 in delinquent bills. We're going to have an update for you tonight at 10. Three suspects accused of breaking into a Galena Park home and attacking the people who live there. ABC 13's Catherine Marchand has more on what happened and where the investigation stands tonight. Two men were arrested in this case, but Galena Park police say a warrant will also be issued for a woman. Maria Hernandez is in her kitchen, but tonight she can't use her oven to prepare a meal for her family. The door shattered after she says intruders slammed her against the stove. Uh, they're very nervous. They're scared. They're shocked. Um, and they're scared for their safety. The 65 year old and her husband Francisco were beaten up. Galena Park police say a group was after their grandson, but ended up attacking them too. He has a pacemaker. So, I mean, at that moment, he could have had a heart attack. Anything could have happened. Neighbors heard the chaos and called Galena Park police. Officers arrested Jorge Salman and Dominique Salazar. They're charged with burglary, but the couple is worried there could be more to come. Investigators are still looking for a woman as well. She has not been caught, and she is the one that brought them into our home. So who's, who's to know that she's not going to go call somebody and send some more people over here? Those two men are in jail tonight. We'll keep you updated on this developing story. In Galena Park, Catherine Marchand, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. A new fallout from hazing allegations involving Montgomery ISD students. Now, to this point, very little information has been released about what allegedly happened off campus. Yeah, but tonight we know it's serious enough that the school district has decided against letting the varsity team complete, compete this week. ABC 13's Micah Hatfield joins us with what we know. You mentioned the seriousness of this situation. It's serious enough that the Montgomery County Sheriff's Office is actually conducting a criminal investigation into what happened. All Montgomery ISD will say is that an alleged hazing incident happened at an off campus residence and several of their students are implicated. The district tells us the allegations violate their athletic code of conduct. What exactly happened has not been released. A week ago today, the district's police department started the investigation, but by Friday, it had been handed over to the sheriff's office. What happened among students during the off-campus incident has the city of Montgomery talking, and although the district hasn't given details, word spreads, and people are stunned by the severity of the claims. I would have expected like better from like the schools. All my friends were not super shocked. They were super shocked by the details of how extreme it was. But again, um, you know, that it's been going on in athletics for a while. I'm sure you could find it at any school, you know, some kind of bullying. The Bears were supposed to play Huntsville here this Friday night. We learned from the district today that they forfeited that game. We did ask the district if any students or faculty had been disciplined because of what happened, and they said they can't comment on personnel issues. In Montgomery County, Micah Hatfield, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. Now to the international controversy involving our Houston Rockets. The NBA now trying to fix strained relations with China after Daryl Morey, the Houston Rockets general manager, posted a comment on Twitter. ABC 13 reporter Maya Shea has the latest on the fallout. The tweet was made days ago, but even now, across the ocean around the world, this tweet and the controversy has not yet died down. And even for pickup games here, we're learning basketball a lot easier than international diplomacy. At a pickup game in the shadow of the Toyota Center, these guys aren't familiar with the latest Rockets tweet controversy, but they are definitely wary of the pitfalls of social media. This is a new day and age where the rate of change moves at an even faster pace. This technology will 
mess up what you say in one quick instance, so you got to be well aware, especially when you're in a position of power. For the Rockets, the tweet by its GM has yielded immediate financial fallout as the team's games are no longer being broadcast in China. Veteran pro sports public relations expert Kevin Cooper says the financial damage should be temporary. The Rockets are an excellent franchise. It's, it's one of the better sports brands in the world, and I think they'll be able to rebound. Um, I'm sure this probably isn't the first time that someone said anything. But what's less clear is the path ahead in public opinion. The NBA's response to Morey to distance itself while still attempting to sound supportive has drawn political backlash from both sides of the aisle. Uh, the implications are more complicated than most people would realize. He's a, a new lawyer now. Longtime friend of Yao Ming and local attorney Charles Foster says it's impossible to explain the complicated history of Chinese politics politics into a few tweets and quotes. He's urging all sides to tone down a bit. It was really is a minor deal that's been blown totally out of proportion. And fans we talk to are mostly hoping the Rockets win. I hope uh, it's no big deal. So I hope it eventually blows over and everything goes back to normal. So the bottom line is international diplomacy, very, very complicated, but the rocket season will continue. Whether or not any fans in China will get to see those games remains to be seen. Reporting from downtown, Maya Shea, ABC 13, Eyewitness News. And from the Rockets to Astros fans, hoping their ace pitcher can deliver another big performance tomorrow after a pretty ugly loss in Tampa. The Rays pounded Astros starter Zach Granke for four home runs on the way to a 10-3 win in Game 3. Houston still leads the series two games to one. Justin Verlander will be pitching Game 4 tomorrow. He's hoping to close out the series. The start time hasn't yet been set. MLB will announce that time after tonight's Yankees-Twins game. Okay, the cool down we've been telling you about finally here. Yes, let's get over to Chief Forecaster David Tillman for an update. David, feeling good out there right now. It really is. 24 hours ago, that front was way north of us, north of Dallas. It was 91 in Waco at that time, 84 in Houston, but we've seen that front make steady progress to the south. It's now south of Houston, and the temperature here in town has now dropped to 75 degrees. It appears that the coolest air appears to be aimed right towards southeast Texas. It is 66 in Lufkin, 69 in Texarkana, so it's starting to really feel good out there now that that front is to the south of us. We're currently at 74 there at Collins Station, 68 in Livingston right now, and it's dropped down to 72 degrees in Conroe. Low temperatures for tonight should make it at least into the mid-60s here in town. Low 60s and maybe even some upper 50s will be seen to the north. High temperatures for tomorrow should make it back to the low to middle 80s, but with that northerly wind continuing, humidity levels are going to stay on the low side. As we look at the next 10 days, we do expect temperatures to, be, to begin to rise once again, maybe even getting close to 90 degrees Thursday into early Friday. Then we'll have another strong cool front go through. That will only allow highs in the 70s over the weekend with lows dropping back into the 50s. So if it starts to feel a little bit warm later this week, we've got the big bonus coming up this weekend. That's a look at weather. Here's a look at traffic with Reed Barry. All right, thanks, David. Just a couple things to let you know about. We have this total closure here on 288 northbound. This is right at Beltway 8. It goes from 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. through Friday. So just this week, you'll have to pay attention to this. Your alternate will be the feeder. Now, as we head to Fort Bend County, another total closure. This is on 59 northbound from FM 2218 to Highway 36. Again, from 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. This one a little bit longer, though, through October 19th. Again, your alternate is the feeder. Now staying in Fort Bend County, this is just some construction that's going to cause a little bit of headache. Again, on US 59 uh, southbound to Highway 99. This is to Murphy Road. This will affect three lanes, so definitely expect those slowdowns if you head in this direction in the evenings until early morning, 9 p.m. to 5 a.m., same as the other two. This goes until Friday. Your alternate, again, is the feeder. Drive safe. All right, Bree, thanks a lot. And you still have time to register to make sure your voice is heard in next month's elections. Today is the deadline to register to vote in Texas. And you can go to abc13.com to get a form to register to vote. You must fill that out and then mail it in. We also have a list of the forms of identification you can use to cast a ballot. There's also information as well on how to apply for an election identification certificate if you do not have a proper photo ID. The date for the next joint and special elections, November 5th. And thank you for getting caught up with us tonight on the evening news. Yeah, be sure to join us at 10 on ABC 13. Good night.